everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Francie is out today, but you can call me Discount Francie. I'm substituting for her. I am Max, and I'm joined by my colleague, Ryan. Hello. Hey, great to see you. Great to see you, Ryan. So we've got a cool story to cover here about uh, electric beyond the consumer use case. It's about the electric delivery van. So Ryan, uh, you and I live in Boulder, and I think we've actually seen some of these in our neighborhood from Rivian uh, in a partnership with Amazon, right? That's right. Over the past few months, they've started to become more and more common, and now I see them all over the place, especially here in Boulder. Yep. Uh, I really love seeing them. They're super cute looking, I think. Just great design. Uh, the big news here is a milestone update from Amazon that they have uh, more than 10,000 of these in the US right now, uh, which is awesome. So I want to get into that report and the numbers and the update. But first, Ryan, let's just talk about the importance of like last mile delivery vehicles and vans. Uh, these are like such a good niche for electric vehicles because they you know start and stop. They're in neighborhoods. They're idling. Uh, those are areas where you want clean air. And there's also the sectors that contribute a lot of carbon emissions. I mean, every time you or I order like a one day delivery package from Prime, right? That's like, you know, not an inherently efficient use of resources. But the more, of course, you can decarbonize that sector, the better. And if you're Amazon, if you're FedEx, if you're UPS, if you're these you know large uh, groups that generate a lot of emissions, uh, you want to get to decarbonization because uh, one, it's green messaging, but two, it also might save you money, which is really interesting. Like there's a report from McKinsey actually from last year that these uh, commercial fleets for light duty electric vehicles are really possible, and the cost of ownership is actually at parity. So I'm not I'm not sure what you think of all this, Ryan, but like how what are your thoughts on just like last mile uh, light commercial, you know, use of electric delivery vans. I think it's incredibly exciting. As you said, I think this is a really ideal use case for electrification. There is a known route usually, and a lot of times it's not super, super long, but it's around town, a lot of stop and go, and you're around a lot of people. And if I have the choice, I'd rather get my mail delivered by an electric vehicle than a diesel truck, which smells and is quite loud usually. Uh, so I think it's only a thing that can benefit us. And it's really awesome to see that it's aligning financially as well, not just benefits for the consumer or for the environment, but financial as well. Absolutely. There's just benefits right on our end of things less smelly neighborhoods, but also uh, it seems like the benefits are just real being realized by industry quicker, right? Like Ryan, you and I are really excited by Tesla Semi, eCascadia, larger heavy duty vehicles. Francie has covered those in other episodes on the podcast, but it's this light duty sector that right now we can see changes in. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of incentive for companies with, you know, money flowing around, financing opportunities, uh, potential, you know, just, uh, uh, tax credit incentives that they can be uh, getting in a lot of cases for this. Of course, you need supporting charging infrastructure. Like you were saying, Ryan, the routes may be known, they may be short in the neighborhood, but it's still important that those uh, trucks, those vans uh, deliver, making deliveries have some place to charge overnight, preferably doesn't need to be fast charging. Amazon has said that right with these 10,000 uh, EDVs that they've delivered with, you know, with Rivian, uh, that they have at this point, 12,000 chargers in the US across more than 100 cities. Yeah, and that's very believable. There is a uh, fleet of Amazon Rivian vans nearby, I think in Broomfield, mm -hmm. and they've got dozens and dozens of chargers and they're all for the delivery vans. Yeah, it's awesome to see them dedicated. And sorry, I misspoke, more than 100 delivery stations. So Amazon's delivery stations do serve, in many cases, different zip codes, different cities. I think at this point, in terms of distribution, it's actually over 1,800 cities in the US, uh, they're saying, that have uh, these vans uh, servicing them, which is really cool. Um, and. If you haven't seen them in your neighborhood yet, you probably will soon. Here's a map of you know many of the uh, current routes they have. Um, and they say more than 260 million packages delivered to date. Awesome, that's a great milestone. It's awesome to see. Yes, uh, I do have to say also these vans uh, in terms of like their experience are really comfortable. They're really ergonomic. It's like, I'm not, you know, here to uh, say that everything Amazon does is perfect in its business and its drivers are all happy and it's treating its workers fairly in every respect. 
but it seems like just taking this case specifically, drivers who are coming out of like a Ram Pro Master into a Rivian EDV for Amazon uh, are getting a more comfortable experience. There's like ventilated seats. Uh, there's like a really just ergonomic driver's cockpit. There's great visibility. I actually had the chance, Ryan, when they were first opening, um, the, when they were first distributing these vans last year at one of their Denver warehouses uh, to take a look at one. And uh, it seems like, you know, when it comes to just the driver experience and the actual like use of the van, it's really fun. And honestly, like a big improvement from the old uh, diesel powered ones uh, that we were seeing before. Right. And that's not just something I've heard from that interview, but I've heard it from tons of different videos and interviews. It seems like across the board, pretty much everyone agrees that actually driving these trucks is a significantly better experience than driving the old diesel trucks or gas trucks. Absolutely. There's plenty of great coverage from people who've gotten to drive these now. I know Marquez Brownlee did on his autofocus channel. So shout out to fellow creators and people who've had a chance to look at these. But, you know, Amazon is rightly showing off a great product they of course have uh, helped finance with rivian uh, interestingly beyond the us they've also come to germany so ryan more than 300 were announced this summer uh, to have been uh, uh, on the road in Europe. So Rivian, believe it or not, Ryan, they may not be selling the trucks and the SUVs in Europe yet, uh, but the delivery vans are there. It's awesome to see. And to me, at least, I think it speaks to the fact that it's a good product. The van itself is a good usable vehicle. Yep, and Rivian's actually able to scale up and make these, which is like a big, you know, um, that was an open question. And I know this is like existential for Rivian at the moment, because Ryan, you know, they're not making a profit on R1T or R1S yet, and no one's expecting them to. Of course, they're early days, but at the moment, this deal with Amazon is, you know, as we've established, important for Amazon because it gives them a better product. It lets them message about how they have green vans. But for Rivian, it's helping finance everything else they do right now to deliver to, you know, customers like you or I or Francie or Kyle great trucks and vehicles. Um, so this is important for their survival, and it's awesome to see they're scaling up. Now, there's still ways to go. The initial, uh, I think, contract is for 100,000 vans by 2030, Ryan. So this is like 10% of that. So within the next uh, six years, they're going to have to scale this even more. It's It'll be really exciting to see. And th there's a long way to go, but I don't think it's impossible. I think that they might be able to do it. Yeah. I like this milestone suggests they might actually just pull it off. Uh, and then Ryan, beyond Rivian, there's lots of other buzz in the uh, EV van space. Uh, we've heard news uh, earlier this month that in Europe, Renault is forming an alliance with Volvo Group. Volvo Group not being Volvo cars, but like the Volvo you know industry uh, company. They're separate from the cars, uh, but basically, right, who are known for making trucks and all kinds of uh, commercial vehicles. They're going to develop delivery vans on an. EV 800 volt platform. So that presumably means very rapid DC charging capability, which could mean you could serve longer routes in the same uh, kind of day. Uh, they're going to be very flexible, of course, skateboard platform as we're used to seeing with EVs. But um, yeah, they're hoping to have these uh, being delivered by 2026. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, competition is something that's great. It'll only help us. Yes. Uh, competition abroad, like lots of European companies getting into this, and also, Ryan, just competition in general in the space for those of us in the U.S. Uh, it's not just the startups who are making these. Uh, we've got uh, General Motors, very established automaker, with Bright Drop, who has delivered 4,000 of them to Ryder, which is a big, you know, kind of a fleet company, logistics, transport. Uh, they... Uh, have a lot of rental vehicles and they've got 4,000 in their rental fleet now that are fully electric. They're the ZEV 600 by Bright Drop. I believe Kyle took a look at uh, one of these. He actually got to drive one of these vans. Um, that's super cool. It's awesome to see. Yeah. Now, you know, Ryan, the, we, we can talk about this in other topics too, but like GM's production of these at the moment seems to be limited just because of their batteries. So 4,000 is a good milestone. I'm really kind of cautiously optimistic about them scaling this up further, uh, but it's cool. Also, Ryan, I don't know if you knew, but in Loveland, uh, we have Lightning E-Motors, which is this awesome company that converts uh, existing van platforms to electric, uh, and they're working on their own bespoke electric architectures too. Uh, but they announced this summer that they had surpassed 5 million miles on North American roads. That's a great milestone. I'm, I'm really happy to see that, and great to see there's some local companies as well. 
Yeah, love local. And also the fact that there's like school buses and these shuttles, you know, still like, I guess what you would consider light duty. I think they're in like the class two, class three zone. Um, But, uh, you know, I think as we see this scaled up to larger school buses and stuff, it'll be exciting as well. But already right now, this makes so much sense. Like you said at the beginning, right? This means like less pollution, cleaner neighborhoods. Um, It's a really easy and like visible sector for us to see. I also wanted to give a shout out to the Ford E-Transit. I've seen these in Boulder. Uh, like I've seen like power companies, uh, I've seen utilities using them uh, as their like kind of, you know, like contractor shuttling thing. Um, these are cool. They're not the most like bleeding edge or state of the art. They are uh, kind of converted from an existing gas platform, but Ford's got the e-transit. So basically my point being that like beyond Rivian EDV, Ryan, last mile deliveries, vans that are making this possible are just springing up. There's more competition coming, which is hopefully gonna drive prices down. Um, I think the big news is gonna be these deals like Rivian and Amazon has been a big deal. FedEx uh, is deal with Bright Drop, whom I mentioned uh, with Ryder, right? It's like if, if you're one of these startups or if you're a company making electric delivery vans, you want to be signing a partnership with UPS. You want to be signing partnerships with these kinds of customers uh, because there are so many deliveries. There's so many last mile trips happening. And uh, Ryan, I want as much of those as possible to be electric very soon. Certainly. And I think these uh, partnerships and deals are going to help with that. Uh, we're, we're starting to see some ramping up. We're hitting some good milestones already. And I, I think the only place that this can go is forward with more and more electric delivery vehicles. Yep, I agree with you. But let us know in the comments, um, you know, in this podcast or in the YouTube video, if you're watching that, uh, do let us know how you think, you know, what are the roadblocks to bigger adoption of scaling this up? Have you seen different kinds of uh, uses of, uh, aside from the EDV, have you seen delivery vans in your neighborhood that are electric? Uh, You know, what are you looking forward to? Uh, What do you think are the most exciting companies in this space? Let us know all that and more. Uh, This has just been a quick exploration though of that big milestone an update from Amazon and Rivian. Uh, this has been Ryan and I filling in again for Francie. Thanks so much for watching. Do subscribe to the Out of Spec podcast to get daily, very frequent updates about everything going on in the EV industry. And uh, thank you for listening or watching today. Great seeing you.